four, three, two, one. Like three men with erect nipples. <laughs> Speaking of which, hello, normal men, normal men. You could have done it then, you had a chance. Speaking of which, hello and thanks for joining us here at the Scarf Begar War, the weekly show that's about as county as it's possible to get. And we've not even had to threaten the move to Moss Side, so that's all good. Although I've just come from there, not now, but last few months. Anyway, it's irrelevant. Let's not get into my personal life again, Ross. God, what can <laughs> I do? Yes, we are here every Wednesday getting together in our separate homes. Let's not get too familiar. We've only been doing it like eight years. I'd be too matey, that one. So generally chat count it and hopefully have a bloody good laugh in the process. As ever, joining me, Nick Lee, is of course the man himself, Russ Johnson. Hello, Russ. You all right, mate? Hello. Yes, I'm fine. Thank you. I'm fine after five wins on the spin. On the spin, on the bounce, on the trot, oh. on the reg. Reg, on the reg, like, yes. reg. On, the, on the reg, on the reg. But well, we've got into the light-hearted chat too quick there. But before we started the light-hearted chat, I've got a bit of somber, bit of somber news. It's a, it's a very sad day, but we've got to announce the death of the Ryan Rydell joke. Oh, boo! It, it made you happy. It More did. importantly, it made me happy. It brought a lot of joy to a lot of people, but it no longer is. It merely was thanks to the copyright police. So. <laughs> I've got a list of everyone responsible for stifling my creativity. Oh, yeah. right. Go on. Ex-girlfriends, the way I am as a person, <laughs> podcast co-hosts, the way I am as a person, friends, and Miss Capener in Year 7 Music. So, how's that? Livid. Absolutely livid. Because Frankie Valley needs the money, doesn't he? Yeah, well, now you're single. You can, you can, you can cross one of those out, can't you? The, the, one of those stifle, the stifle effects is gone now. Yeah, but the next girlfriend I get will stifle my creativity. <sighs> you know, you're confident. <laughs> <laughs> that works on so many levels. What are we doing tonight anyway? Should we try well, crack yeah. a bit of admin out? Yeah, we'll crack a bit of admin out. Before we do that, though, let's just say that we have got uh the none other than roger wilde joining us very very soon he said he's going to be with us around half past seven that's why you can't see him now uh, so hopefully he will be with us and we will get him out and discuss all things county with him so that's what's going to be now coming up very soon guest when they get like none other than before the name that's that's when it's good yeah, it? yeah 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 I, I, I couldn't give guests. you none other than rush johnson no 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 we're just literally fan guests aren't we we're fan guests on our own podcast basically aren't we <laughs> yeah. that's all that's yeah. all we are that's all that's we about are it, yeah we just we just have the time to do this that's all that's all it is anybody anyone can do this and that's debatable just, sometimes i know it is yeah <laughs> it is it's so debatable uh so we'll the get Roger out. Though, and that's the main thing yeah the inclination yeah, and the and the drive and the motivation because that's all we've got is the drive, the motivation, uh, the know how, the technical skills, the know how. Yeah, the contacts. But apart from that, that's all. That's all you need. I'm just that's a man <laughs> sitting here with his microphone asking you to love him. I know. Honestly, we're just we're just we're, we are just normal men, aren't we? We're just normal men. What do you mean, normal men? We're just innocent men. <laughs> That's all, yeah. If that gets copyrighted now, if that gets a copyright. Oh, God, yeah, I never thought of that. It won't get copyrighted. No, it, it, won't, it won't. It won't do. It won't do. Public domain, isn't it? It's like, like an old folk song. It's like part of the cultural fabric of the country. That yeah. You can't copyright it. <laughs> yeah. Is that a thing? It doesn't, it doesn't sound like a thing. Yeah. Well, M Mickey Mouse is grow going out of copyright soon, isn't he? Like, M Mickey oh, Mouse right. is going to be public domain from the 1st of January next year. So you can do right. whatever you want with Mickey Mouse as of January. You can do whatever you want. Is that including some... like is that including yes. when you visit Disney? You can do whatever you want with yeah. Mickey Mouse. There's gonna be some awkward yeah. holiday photos. <laughs> <laughs> it's really dark. 
it's gonna get yeah. <laughs> went dark really quickly. Right, admin then. Uh, before we sorry, before again, before we do admin, we just say thank you for watching to all the regular viewers: Jamie Willis, Phil James, Matt Bryan over in Florida. Uh, Waggy's on. I right, Waggy, Ian Dowden, friend of the show, John Billsbury, all the usual people out there. Thank you so much for supporting us week in, week out by watching us live. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, we were leading into me, also. Yes, I, I was. Yes, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, for you I, to thank I meant me. it more than Russ did as well. No, 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 I was leading into you to do the start the admin bit. Can you oh, can yes. everyone tell we're killing time till Roger gets here? <laughs> <laughs> it's not like six points to talk about, is it? Um, <laughs> we are on Patreon now. If you want access to the audio podcast straight after broadcast, 35, 36 hours before everyone else, then you can sign up to the TSBW fan club. Well, I mean, I could tell you about it, but should I, should I tell them about it? Is it boring when I tell people about things? Is it? Is it? Well, yeah. I, We'll let these two handsome, velvet-voiced fuckers tell them about it, shall we? Nick, can I ask you a question? Sounds like you just have, mate, but you crack on. How do you like your content? Well, I'm glad you asked. Personally, Russ, I like mine hot and fresh out the kitchen. We've discussed this. What? We had that meeting about you referencing R. Kelly and we agreed it was too problematic and you wouldn't do it anymore. Sorry mate, it's just the best combination of words to describe just one of the many benefits that members of the Scarf Bagara War fan club get for the very reasonable price of just three English pounds a month. And not only that, there are discounts on merchandise, exclusive access to live events, bonus episodes and all sorts of fun to make it worth your while. You see, to get the weekly audio podcast immediately after broadcast, 36 hours before everybody else. So hit the link in the description and join now for just three quid a month and help support the only podcast for county fans by county fans. All that plus exclusive early announcements and anything else we can think of. That was all right, wasn't it? It was. I'm just not sure about the R. Kelly thing. There you go. Nice um, we promise not to play that every week. But, it, it, you know, even if you're watching because there's, there's fuck all else on, which I've just had a text message from my auntie Marie to say... Uh, so thanks, Auntie Marie. She's watching because there's fucking oh, all else on. Things must I mean, be bad. Sorry for the language. I know. Well, yeah, it does get it's getting a bit rude now, isn't it? But yeah, um, doesn't matter why you doesn't matter why you're watching. Thank you for watching anyway. Um, and John CC says, "What about me? Well, what about you, John? I don't, I don't, I don't understand. What, what about John? I mean, I'm joking. CC stands, for, <laughs> CC stands for carbon copy, so he was already implied in all the others." Ah, right. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good out, isn't it? That's a good that's, out. It's nearly as good as the 404 joke that I did on my first ever podcast, wasn't it? Do you, do you remember that? I, I still... <laughs> Don't remember that. My, my first ever podcast, you were talking about the number of people who'd watched, who'd listened to the previous one, and it's 404. And I said, well, maybe there was just an error on the page. Which, that's good. That is pretty good for, good for a non-technical non person like you. It's all been downhill since then. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what though? The, just going back to the Patreon as well. The, on the Patreon, uh, if you if you're a member of the Patreon, or if you are a patron, I need to get that right. Um, <laughs> you get access to uh, some bonus podcasts for the next three weeks. So one went live last Monday, which was the Danny Lloyd podcast. He was the first ever player guest that we had on. He paved the way for a lot of other players to say, "Yeah, I'll come on." Um, and this week, well, over the next three weeks, we've got. Gary Stopforth and uh, Mike Flynn as well over the next two weeks, sorry. Uh, but I listened to a, back to a bit of the Gary Stopforth one and we were dead excited to interview Gary Stopforth and he was dead funny as well. So do listen to it. Um, it's really good. But I, I, I listened to it and there was a question that I asked him was, what what is it like to play in front of 3,800 people? Like, and I was dead excited about that at the time. And look, just look how far we've come and what, you know, the the, um, the, the crowds we're getting now. I don't know. Mad. Sat there all uh, thingy. Um, yeah, Waggy says about the Patreon, if it works, I think that's a, uh, I think that's a computer user non-technical issue. Oh, he did that. Like I'll tell you what, the, the, the computer jokes, uh, it's like an episode of the IT crowd, this. Well, you know, I, I live and breathe it every day. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they all come out every day. It's all got um, a big bang theory. <laughs> Um, so yes, so let's should we just get straight into the football because before we know it, Roger Wilde will be here. I'm hoping at some point. <laughs> and so because he did say I spoke to him literally at 
R5, something like that. And he said, yeah, he's up for coming on. Um, and he was just just had to get home and sort himself out. So if you are waiting for Roger Wales, imagine, he will be here soon. Imagine he's picked up a knock. That would be awkward, wouldn't it? Man, if, if he does pick up a knock, he'll be the person best placed to treat it. So he'll be I mean, right. he's. I, I reckon he's got a stash of um, magic sponges. Yeah. yeah. He's and, school, some, and what a magic water as well. Yeah, and some Jaffa cakes. No, jelly babies, isn't it? Jelly babies are good. Jelly babies. Jelly babies, don't they? Yeah, or, yeah, or Jaffa cakes are them cis uh, gels as well. Yeah, That's what me and footballers have in common. Yeah, Jaffa cakes and jelly babies. That's what makes me think I could be a semi, a semi-professional at best. Yeah, semi-professional at best. Yeah, even okay. that's pushing it. I think that is pushing it a bit. Um, Saturday! <laughs> Saturday, yes. Uh, Stevenage. Yes, um, Stevenage. So we spoke to those that watched last week. We spoke to Matt Farley from the Stevenage FC podcast. Um, the most positive man in the world. So it was. Yes. Um, I, I bet he's still positive. I bet as them goals rolled in on Saturday, he was just like, this is great. This is great, mate. <laughs> yeah. I just imagine him that that meme of the of the character sat in the fire with the fire all going around him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stephen is just like I don't know, going to oblivion. He's just sat there going, "This is all right," eh? hmm, with his team. <laughs> uh, but he did say that they that he he was he went for a sneaky two one win. I think for Stephen I went I for a two one. I went for a narrow two one win for County. You went for did you go for one nil? Yes, I went for one nil County. Yeah. So you were nearer than off. yeah, you were nearer than me. And um well, I'm the most positive county fan. Well, as we've really. as we've established, yeah. You've, you've, right, yeah. You've, you've changed, you've changed. Um <laughs> but yeah, it was it was probably easier than I thought it would be, and which is telling. And we'll obviously we we spoke about the Crawley match because that was a bit I thought that was a bit of a struggle for us last night, and we'll come to Rochdale soon, but Different, massive, massive differences in performances, and I thought with Stevenage, we, I thought we held, we held them out. I was a bit disappointed at how poor they were. Yeah, it's it kind of gives you this. That's that's why I think we're going to finish second because I think they're, they're going to fall away now. Even though they've got a couple of games in hand on us, it just it just didn't seem to offer much in particular. Just just for a, for a side that's supposedly hard to beat. Mm. And even obviously we didn't get our, our second, didn't wrap it up until like the dying seconds. But still, there was never a point where you thought, oh, they're, they're going to come back into this. I know they made the three subs at half time and had a bit of a spell, but fine, wasn't it? Yeah, they had a bit of a fifty. It's like a fifteen minute spell where they were where they yeah. were on top, weren't they? But it, it which also... which you'd, you'd expect anyway after after doing nothing in the first half, you'd expect that at some point, wouldn't you? And especially with three subs at half time. You'd expect them to have a bit of a period, but we soaked it up nicely and took our chance when it came. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Um, I, we, I mean, arguably, we could have scored before that as well, couldn't we? Yeah. Um, before that. So, yeah, it was a weird one. I, th- I thought we deserved the second goal. And, and as, as long as the game carried on at 1-0, um, Matt's comments started to seep in to my psyche. You know, when he said that when they were at Aston Villa away and, and, and any, any team they play, they tend to do well towards the end. So the longer it went on at 1-0, I was thinking, Jesus, they're going to come at us in the in the last 15 or 10 minutes. And they just didn't seem to do that. They didn't seem to, they didn't seem to be a fan of pressing either, did they? they no. Just, no. Ryan Moore's pointed out in the comments as well, they allowed Byrne to have a lot of the ball. And just just let us build. Yeah, couldn't couldn't handle the wide centre backs. But yes, Pierre Gianni was very good as as is expected. Yeah, yeah, they were def- Yeah, they, I agree with that. The defensively good and well set up. That that was telling. I mean, yeah. that the 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 amount of goals they've conceded this season. I mean, suggests that that they've got the third best defense, or well, joint second best defense actually in the league. Yeah. So I was surprised at how much how much we did create though against that well set up defense. Um, it was it was a really interesting game, I thought, and I'm glad we came out on top. And even after the match, Steve Evans praised us and said, "You know, he's cut the you know they're a good side." Um, so that was pleasing to hear. And they mentioned That's the fans from as Steve well. Evans, isn't it? Yeah, yes, yeah. indeed, yeah, yeah. Even, I'm I'm 
particularly a big fan of Miles Hippolyte getting himself to the byline. Two pivotal moments in the two games this week, and they've both been from him getting to the back, like turn, turning the defender and getting to the byline. Fantastic. Yeah. And again, that's two goals he's been involved in, but it won't go down as an assist once again. No. As, as we discussed last week, he's, he's involved, but he's not necessarily getting the assist, but it's just as vital. No, he's going to get the assist for the Stephen. Oh, he got the he? assist for the Stephen. Yes, last night he didn't get the assist for, yeah. 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 Um, and it was nice as well to see that the railway end was opened. Um, as Carl Williams says, yeah, decided to have a change to sit at the railway end. Really enjoyed it. Um, I was thinking of that. Do you know what I was thinking of? Could I change my ticket to the railway end before the Stevenage match? But I'm sure the club said it was sold out. Or have I got that wrong? Yeah, I think that, I think that was wrong. I think, well, we look at it. No, he well, I know. Yeah. 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 But, but yeah, I'd, I'd, yeah, I can't remember now. No, I'm, I'm sure some more came on. So I think they were selling it a block at a time. Right. I think, yeah. Uh, okay. Because I do fancy sitting yeah. in there at some point, but they did turn us round at the kickoff. Yeah, you were a fan of that, were you? I'm not a fan of it when there's nobody in that end. Yeah. Oh, I'm not yeah, a fan of it, it when it's when it's there's away fans in that end either. Um, but that's it's what you're doing. It you've got to you've got to turn 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 them around when you. Uh... It it lends something. To, it lends a bit more credence to my theory that it tends to be. It tends to be teams with an ex county player in the squad that have a good go at turning us around and again yes. and, and they turned us around i think there's i think there's something in that but but then again if you've got if you've got a big big stand behind the goal that's full of home fans then i suppose you're going to want to turn around anyway I, maybe correlation does not imply causation possibly and that might nice. be the most boring episode title we're ever going to have <laughs> <laughs> wow uh, that's very highbrow. I like it. I like it. But then, it's funny though because we, me and uh, my lad discussed this yesterday very, very briefly because he he sort of glazed over when I started talking about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, we talked about well Rochdale. You're at the side, so there's no real hope. Obviously, there's home advantage. Let, uh, forget about how many Rochdale get, but if you give anybody the the, the side, you've got no sort of real end advantage, have you? When it mm. comes to the away team, or, be, or being the away team, um, or being the home team, you get what I mean, don't you? Um, so there's no effect. So yeah, James Lister, surely no effect being turned around when the home fans are in there. Yeah, absolutely agree with that. Um, I think there's a difference whenever... between fans dotted about in the railway, end. and as that was the last one to go on sale, it's going to be more of the fair weather fans rather rather than the hardcore as it is in the Cheadle end. Like most, yeah. of, most of the vocal backing always come from the Cheadle end. But yeah, I can see can see both sides of that definitely. Yeah. Yeah. That's well done. Yeah. You can see both sides. Um, <laughs> another one. <laughs> hey, you're only off form tonight, mate. Um, I didn't yeah. even mean that one. Oh. <laughs> so it's like, like Rochdale last night. Whoever won the toss, you can shoot whichever end you want. You got you got 3,000 county fans on the side all cheering. It's not like, okay, like Newcastle probably do it really well, don't they? They stick you up in the gods, don't they, in the corner where you can. I was be, just going to say that. Can, when the grounds developed, redeveloped, where. When we've got the whole ground redeveloped, where would you have the away fans? Up in the corner. Yeah. Up in a corner. Well, it's not, it's not going to be the same effect as it is in Newcastle, where they're like two no. miles up. But... <laughs> no. No. Yeah, I'd have them in a corner, near a corner flag. I quite like it when it's just one block. Um, when it's just one block. Uh, can we just play a video? Because Roger Wilde's ringing me. So I need to I need to pick this up because he's probably got technical issues. Yeah, play a video. So, play, play all the yeah. videos. Yeah, go on. <laughs> He's not playing a video. He's not bothered to play a video. He's just, yeah. Oh my god! Oh, this is unprecedented in the uh, the history of the show. That he's just he's just cracking on. Headphones off. It's all happening. All happening. Well, I'll tell you what. You can hear about our Patreon all over again. No, you can get this. If you're watching us on YouTube, please like, share, and subscribe. And for the audio podcast, please rate, review, and recommend us on whatever podcast player you are listening to us on. Cheers. Thank you. Few more comments coming in on the placement of the away fans. Ryan Moore always said away fans should always be at the side of the pitch, never behind the goal. I'm a fan of that as well. Although we wouldn't have got the scenes that we had at Bolton. So swings and roundabouts in it. Uh, John Billsbury, Barrow have the right idea, put the away fans where they can't see it all. Barrow, though, is the type of place where you wouldn't want to see it all. So 
you know, Bar- Barrow as twinned with the the upside down from Stranger Things. Phil Panton, open mic, Nick. No, never, never happening. Not again. No, not not on my life. If I lived in the bungalow car park, yes, yep, suits me. I'm one of them. I think we should just treat away fans like really, really badly. I I don't go in. For, I know it's with, with Doncaster away earlier in the season. They had some fan engagement bod. I, in the county supporters groups, after asking us to fill in a survey and oh, did you enjoy did you enjoy your trip and all that? I'm like away fans should have a terrible terrible time of it. That's 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 what I'm all for. Don't forget if you're watching on YouTube, like, subscribe, share, tell people about it. If you don't know anyone, then just go and sidle up to someone on a bus, sniff the hair, and tell them about the podcast. That'd be very much appreciated. And if you're listening to the audio version on your podcast player of choice, you can like, rate, review, follow, all that good stuff. It all, all really helps. Happy Hatter says, best matches atmosphere-wise are where we can see and hear the away fans. Yeah, I mean, I'd I'd say away fans, if they're making enough noise, you'll be able to hear them anyway. But, you don't, yeah, I suppose you don't want them too close to the pitch. I think Russ, Russ's theory of having them high up somewhere in a corner kind of works for me, I think. You still get a bit of noise from them. And if it's a new re- new re- re- railway end, then you'd be assuming that we're going to have both home and away fans in the same in the same stand, which is, is good. Nightmare for the stewards, but, you know, swings and roundabouts in it, swings and roundabouts. I, I, I love how just, this must be... A, a very lengthy phone call. It's, it's all happening like this is genuinely unprecedented. We've never before had a guest like come and do this and just try and phone up. Oh, and Russ, Russ has just pulled the face, which is even even more worrying. I'm just, oh. just trying desperately not to uh, not to have any dead air. What I will do, I mentioned I mentioned uh, Miss Kaepner in Year Seven music class. My first day of secondary school, Year Seven. They were sorting out music lessons for the whole class and asking everyone what they play. It's like, I play guitar, blah, 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 put your name down. And then no one else was suggesting anything. And I had my hand up. She said, oh, what do you play? I said, I play the triangle. And she shouted at me. And then they yeah, just shouted at me and made me stand up in front of the whole class for the rest of the lesson. Just, and I, I vowed after that day I would never try and be funny again. And I haven't. So thanks, Miss Kaepner. Well done. Oh, this is this this is this is mental. This is absolutely mental. I've I've never seen anything like this. A guest actually making a phone call. Uh, Andrew Hotwood, I think the initial plan for the redevelopment at the end is away fans bottom tier and county in the top tier. Either either way, there's going to be stuff getting thrown, isn't there? It's going to be. You kind of see that a lot at the bigger grounds. You see it at Sheffield United on Wednesday and what have you, where the the fans are on di- like tiers above and below each other, and there'll be stuff thrown about, which is. Just won't be able to sell bottled drinks, like and then the price of pies and stuff like that. You don't want to be, don't want to be throwing them round. James List said a good practice for radio. And like, oh, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with the radio thing. I've had had enough of uh, had enough of talking to myself. Ian Dowden, no, no one's laughing now. Indeed, indeed they haven't. Indeed they haven't. Uh, happy <laughs> Roger's green room demands haven't haven't been met. No M and M's. Oh, there's plenty of M&Ms when I've got a spotlight, spotlight, Spotify playlist on the go. Carl Williams versus Clear is making you do all the work again tonight, mate. I don't think there's ever been a point where I've done all the all the work. It's just, yeah, Russ, Russ, Russ does all the work and I just turn up and say one one insightful thing a podcast. I've had to learn about football to, to do this podcast. I, my thing is that no one should listen to a word I say because it's all bollocks. And I've had to like since we've been on YouTube, I've thought, well, best step it up and actually learn how to talk about football, because all the other football football podcasts I've listened to are just boring. This, I mean, luckily this isn't boring. Luckily, this is just the, the best bit of podcasting we've ever seen. Does anyone want to see the clip of the? Uh... <laughs> Does anyone want to see the clip of the Bradford player falling over the ball again? Oh, well, it is twenty nine seconds to kill. Here we go. <laughs> County's unbelievable historical record here at Valley Parade. Looks to be continuing. Oh, terrible slip by Songo. What on earth happened there? <laughs> he lost the ball about five times there. It's, it's uh, <laughs> utterly bizarre. That's the strangest thing I've ever seen. Just glitched. Almost. <laughs> yeah.
Oh, 30 seconds. I, I didn't realise I'd have to fill. What we should have, we should get a, a producer on here. I, I listen to, I listen to like Off Menu with J, uh, James A. Castor and Ed Gamble, and they've got an actual producer in the studio with them who can sort of, mind you, they have the guests in the room with them, so it's not too bad. Ryan Moore, can we talk about how pivotal Callum Camps has become in recent weeks? Yes, let's. I mean, if Will Collar, well, Will Collar's not going to go because, as we've all established, Will Collar's shit and no one will want to buy him as, as people are at great pains to push. Yeah, it's fantastic to see he's had a bit of a stop start season. I think we discussed it last week. He had been, he had a good month at the start of the season, been in and out of the team with little injuries, and it's good to see him like properly, properly just looks, looks quite, he looks a class above again and came very close to scoring again last night. I think the second time he's hit the woodwork in a matter of, matter of weeks. It's just, what a pro- I know it's a bit of a cliche with the whole, oh, it's a nice problem to have, but it, it really is. If, if you've got if there's SARS to come back, who's not guaranteed a spot, then up top you've got Paddy Madden, who's not guaranteed a spot. It's absolute to, to, to be in this situation now, like, what, five or six years after, you know, there were some games where having to put youth players on the bench just to make up the numbers because the budget was fairly... I mean, don't get me wrong, some managers did did very well with what was pretty poor budget at times in National League North, but to, to have all these options now, players who aren't even guaranteed a place on the bench, and I, I don't think Russ is actually on the phone. I, I've, I've decided, I, I think this is just a, this is just a ruse. <laughs> and he's heard me as well. Absolutely fantastic. This is going to be like the, literally the worst audio podcast. SK8, fellow sk like me. You're the eye candy. Yes. I mean, if I'm the eye candy, that's a depressing state of affairs. Oh, hallelujah, Roger's here. Oh, fantastic. He's, he's oh, actually he's here. Uh, yeah, L- last word on the Rochdale game last night. Did anyone know what was going on with Jack Stretton at full time? I think Jack Stretton was a bit, uh, a bit full-blooded with Danny Lloyd towards the end by the sounds of it, hence the fact that he, he had a bit of bother. But yeah. The, the reaction from Bentley was just a reaction of a man who's going to be getting sacked soon. Oh, hallelujah, Ross. That went well. There we go. Well there we go. That, yeah. I feel like I feel like I've just done like 15 minutes at work talking just talking to somebody through something. I, you know, I was getting things. dangerously close to going full Alan Partridge there. I was going to be like, <laughs> Do you know what? You, you've, you've done really, the really best well. Lord. <laughs> you've done really, really well there. So thank God for um, the comments. So Roger is with us. He's backstage. He's just gone getting some headphones and he's going to join us. In a minute or so, and we did say half past, so you know, um, let, you know, he's it's, early. It's, he's early, if anything. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. He he, uh, he entered the podcast with the same wild abandon, abandon he used to enter the pitch to treat an injured player. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, a, a bit of a lessons learned. He's, he's trying to use a Mac to come on, and and he, his Mac wasn't working, so he's got his iPhone, and I think we're ready to bring him out. So. We haven't talked about Rochdale yet, but we'll sod that off. Shall we get our esteemed guest, Roger Wilde, out? There we go. Mm. Hello, Roger. You've got yourself on mute, mate. If you can unmute yourself. That would be lovely. Don't make me feel again. While he does that, um, getting some comments in. Oh, Roger, Roger. Tech support, Russ. Yes, that's me. This is like one of them satellite link ups, you know, when they've got like a war reporter in the Middle East on BBC. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he can hear us. He's gone now. Oh, dear. This is like, I, re- I remember watching the Oldham podcast when they had Joe Royal on and they, they, it was just an absolute nightmare. They couldn't use his internet wherever he was. It was just, but I think, I think Roger's internet's good. I think it's just the sound that we're struggling with. Oh. There we go. Hello. 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 Is that better? Yes. That lovely. Better? Yep. All right. Okay. <laughs> I think I can't, hang on. I can't. I'm just, I'm trying to get myself on the picture there. Is that oh, okay? Right, Can you see yeah, me? yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you, what are you doing? Are you right. balancing it on your knee? Is that what you're doing? Kind of thing. Yeah, my wife's oh. got it on her head. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Well, that's better. Yeah, stay there. Stay there for an hour. <laughs> Oh, it's like one of those one of those old old television aerials where you had to stand on a ladder to get a picture and someone had to stay there forever. Yeah. Right. Not okay. Isn't that yeah. how Rod Hull died? If I, I, th is right. it, I think it is, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Plus hell though, she made it dark. I know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, Ro Ro Roger, how are you? And so thank you I'm, for coming on. How are you? I'm all right. Yeah, fine. Fine, thank you. Are you? Yeah, yeah, lovely. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for joining us. It's it's a uh, it's a real pleasure for us to speak to somebody so esteemed and a legend <laughs> of the club, a legend <laughs> of the club. <laughs> oh, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't see how I can be. I only I only scored twelve goals in twenty four games or something. I don't know. Anyway, that's, go that's on. Fi that's, that's a fifty percent hit rate. Surely that's that's Luke yeah, no. standard, isn't it? I know. I was good. Scored. I was good. I was good, wasn't I? <laughs> <laughs> so if we, I think if we start with your footballing career then, because I think most county fans will know you from being the the, the physio that was yeah. there, I don't know, as long, well, almost as long as Kenny Boxshaw's been around. Well, no, not quite as long as Kenny. Um, I think I worked it out. I think I was there 26 years. Yeah, 26 years. 26 years. So if we Asa, go... Asa Hartford signed me. Right, because we were going to come to that. How did you end ah, up? Right, counting? okay, go on, um, go on. Yeah, if we if we, we like to do things chronologically, I mean, we can dance around if you want. I don't really mind. You know, how, it how, doesn't how matter. I don't mind either way. Either way. <laughs> so what? Okay, then how? What? How did you? How did you get? How did you? How did? You, how did you come to County Ace of Hartford? Signed you as a player, then you stayed on as a physio. Talk us through that. Well, yeah, I, I'd gone. I was at Barnsley, and we were in the championship, and I'd been there four years. And the manager decided uh, I was too old to be in his plans, which is fair enough. You do come to work to that stage at, as you get to thirty-four, and uh, they released me. And then Asa Hartford gave me a ring in the summer and asked me to go over to Edgeley Park. I drove over there with my dad and spoke to them and decided to give it a go for a year. And it was really weird because after I'd, after I'd signed, my dad had been looking around the ground. I'd never been to Wesley Park before in all my career because obviously, you know, when you play at the uh, high level that I did play at, <laughs> Stockport were in the lower, in the fourth division at that time, which I'd never been there before. And uh, but as we came out of the ground, my dad said, you know what? He said, I've got a really good feel about this place. And that was weird because tw 26 years. Yeah, 26 years. So that's how I got there. Asa was the manager. Nice. Okay. So before that then, you you played for... A Play for quite a few clubs. Um, we'll, we'll go off Wikipedia because that's all we can see to Go find. on. Sheffield Wednesday, 10 years. Uh, then I moved to Oldham, who were in the championship. I was there three and a half years with initially Jimmy Frizzle, uh, who all was right, great. Yeah. So different to any manager I'd played with at Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, and then Joe Royal took over, who was the best manager I've ever, ever played for as a player. And then I scored a lot of goals for a lot more goals for Oldham than I'd scored for Wednesday, although I did score quite a lot there. And uh, that got me a big move to sport in Lisbon um, in wow. the Portuguese Premier League. I was there, I signed a two year contract, stayed for about ooh, just over, just under 18 months, and then moved to Sunderland. So who were. Sorry, the, 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 yeah, move to, the move to sport in Lisbon then. Did you go... I'm always interested with this, when players yeah. move around. When you went yeah. there, I mean, I, I don't know how old you were, but... I was probably, 29. I was 29 when I went there. So not a youngster. So did you go over with no. your wife? Did you move all locks yeah, up yeah. and Yeah. I remember going over there for talks because it was a manager called Harry Haslam who tried to sign me uh, for Sheffield United uh, while I was at, at Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, but Jack Charlton wouldn't let me go. He said, "You're not going. You're not going straight to Sheffield United from from us." Um, and Harry Haslam rang me when I was at Oldham after three years or so. I'd scored fifty goals in a hundred league games in the Championship, and um, uh, 
he said, did I want to go and play abroad in Portugal? And he sa I said, and, and at 29, you're sort of thinking, well, yeah, I've always fancied going abroad. And uh, so he sort of, my contract was up at Oldham and he set the move up and uh, myself and the club secretary at Oldham went out to Portugal, to Lisbon. And uh, we had a great week out there negotiating, having a look round and looking at the football club, watching matches against Benfica. And um, so eventually I came back and I said to my wife, I've got to play for Liverpool to earn this sort of money <laughs> that, that, that they were offering. Um, and Liverpool were the best team in Europe at that time. So, uh, yeah, we all we went out there, lock, stock and barrel, the two kids. I got a two-year-old daughter and a six-year-old daughter. And they were fabulous, honestly. They, they were a fabulous club. They, they paid for my eldest daughter to go for, to an English-speaking school. Uh, we had a big apartment in a place called Cascais, which is near Estoril, about 15 kilometres up the coast. Used to drive along the coast road every morning down to training into Lisbon and uh, yeah we used to train on this at the, at the stadium Jose Alvalade and we used to get about 10,000 people watching training every day nice. Bloody hell. it was unbelievable it was so different to English football at that time yeah yeah so I don't know how I don't know if you know we you probably don't know how this works but we have live live viewers and they they they're commenting all the time and we do get questions in. I so, wondered I wondered if that would happen yeah. yeah. Yeah so if if anybody has got any questions do comment in and we'll read the best ones out. Um Happy Hatter uh, asks a question. Uh, she says uh, how do the cultures at clubs differ what made us different and special? So I guess take take the first question the cultures about sporty Lisbon I guess I, we'll go there first and then we'll we'll talk yeah. about County and the others, but yeah, how was yeah. how was it different culturally from from the football clubs you were uh, in England? Right. Well, the main thing was uh, the preparation for matches because every every home game, uh, sorry, every away game, we used to go away overnight. Um, if we were and we'd be we and if it was a European because it used to be the European Cup then. Not, not the Champions League. And when we played in Europe, we'd go away for three days. Even at home matches, we'd, go, we'd, we'd have two days. Preparation, eating, training right, which didn't really happen in England. Um, the training was very different as well. Uh, very, very different. It was, it was a bit like uh, specifically for... Uh, sprinting and uh, you know uh, a lot of passing like they do now it was a totally different game and um, so you you did spend a lot of time on the training ground but one thing I did notice when I first went there at the end of the training sessions there used to be a lot of crossing and first time shooting whereas in England it, and, it, and it still happens now where if you do a shooting session the coach stands on the edge of the box players pass the ball to him he lays it off to one side yeah. and you'd shoot easy i mean it's a piece of cake really over there they were they were crossing them and you had to finish first time and i remember when i was watching it initially when i first went there i'm thinking wow these lads are scoring some great goals and do you know what when you when you'd had a few of those training sessions you were lashing the balls in yourself like that it was fantastic it was great yeah so it was it was very different and uh, I think it's sort of now England or British football or English football has caught up with that and they do a lot more preparation and think about the preparation. Later on, ask me about sports scientists. Yeah, I'll just make a, make a note of that. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, that's something that's like crept in in recent years, isn't it? Now, it, it, you, yeah, do you want to talk about it now? Yeah. Just, yeah. Do yeah. it, do it. Yeah, yeah. This, this is, is what right, we right. love. Yeah, we're nerds. <laughs> right, right. Well, what's happened, I think, now is because I, I've, because I trained as a physio, was qualified in sort of the early nineties. I've, I've had a foot as a player in the old ways, the old-fashioned ways, as mm. people call it, and the new scientific ways. And for me, uh, it's gone too far scientific because I'm looking at it, you know, from a, in, from a, from a, a perspective of, of experience in both, whereas. The people who are now running football, especially 
the fitness and the, and the sports science of it, they've never seen the old ways, really. Um, and also, these people who are at every club in the football league, and I'm saying that, I don't know it for sure, but I'm, 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 I'm pretty certain it's true, that any of these sports scientists have never played at, at the professional level. Mm. So they're introducing everything they've learned from a textbook and at university, yeah? Now, you could say that about physio, but there's a lot of physios who've actually played football. I've, I got my degree in Manchester, so I understand what a footballer needs from a physio perspective, and I've got the, the education to back that up. And I, I definitely think that, that you can... Because tissues never changed in, in thousands of years, you know. Yeah. The, a knee is what it was a thousand years ago. You know, it's the same tissue, the same structure. So the healing process is the same. So I know that, you know, all these newfangled things that come out, all these, these uh, fashionable things that come out and then fall by the wayside, they, they, they don't overtake, you know, anything that was done in the past. So uh, you, can use, uh, you can use some of these things and try them. Uh, in conjunction with the old-fashioned ways. But do you know what? The old-fashioned ways work really well in, in physiotherapy. Um, so sports science is, oh, wow. It, it, I've got lads there. I have always come across sports scientists. I've come across many who've never played the game and have hung themselves, have hung themselves because they... They just apply everything from a theoretical point of view to the to the players who are practical, and it doesn't always work. And and they're like purists, if you like, whereas physios tend to be they they do what they they do what works. Um, they've caused me a lot of injuries in in over the years. The sports scientists, I have to say. <laughs> So when you say it's an interesting, so let's let's delve a bit deeper. This. So you say they've caused you a lot of injuries. What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? Not obviously not you personally, right. but the players that you've got to deal with. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not me personally, obviously. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. right. Uh, they come in and they think they think they can revolutionise things. And I always and I've spoken to them over the over the years, the different ones, and I've said, look, you come into here, you come into the club, everything takes time. If I, for example, if I took you out now and did some sprints with you and did some totally different things to what you, you normally do, what would you feel like in two days? Stiff. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd be throwing up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. You'd be tin man. You'd be tin man. And as soon as they come into the football club, that's what they do. We had a lad come in when Gary Ablett, God bless him, it was a great bloke, Gary. I loved him to bits. Gary brought in a, a sports scientist from Liverpool. Got all the qualifications. Yeah, he was a nice lad. Good lad. Well qualified. We had a, we had a player called Greg Tanzi. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Would have, been, would have been probably 2010, maybe. And this sports scientist got Greg in uh, round about this time of the season. Um pulling a sledge, sprinting with a sledge trailing behind him with weights on, you know, a proper training sledge. And I'm watching it. I'm thinking, right, okay, why is he doing that? And he said, well, it makes him stronger. You know, you take that off and he can run faster. And he had him doing this for about three days. On the fourth day, Greg came in from training with a vastus lateralis strain now that's the yeah. that's the lateral yeah that's a, that's the outside muscle right i've never seen of the thigh of the outside muscle of the quads i've never seen one of these ever before or since and i was watching what greg was doing and he because he was pulling this weight with really heavy weight with the, this sledge behind him he was altering his running style to cope with the extra weight 
And that put the, the stress on this muscle, which never in the quads, it's usually the middle one, the rect femur. The sound's gone. Are you it? No, it sounds you... good. I don't, no, I can't hear him. It's, it, it sounds gone, Roger. I thought it. I thought. It, I thought it might just be me. <laughs> so I, I no, no, just... no, it wasn't. That's why I was looking at you. <laughs> yeah, I, you thought it was you. Okay. Right. Yeah. Apologies, Roger. Sounds gone. We're having technical issues with Rog. Um, let me have a look at his. I'm going to have fun editing this. <laughs> um. You're going to have fun editing for the, for the podcast, aren't you? Oh, do you? Just make a note of when it is, actually. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, so while Roger's trying to work out all... Oh, there we go. He's gone. So let's, he'll probably try and join back in. Yeah, interesting. You have though, no, no idea what my next question was as well. My, my next question was going to be on, on seeing as you mentioned people who are familiar with the, the theoretical side and have got no actual experience. I had a, <laughs> yeah. I, I had a magnificent <laughs> fucking question. Uh, we have, I have um, starred some of your comments, by the way, if, if everybody's still there about. So especially about the magic sponge and the bucket and things. Let's let's get Roger back in. Are you Hello. there, Roger? Hello. Can Don't you happen then? Yes, we can. We can hear you now. Oh right, right. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. Don't know what happened there. Um, right. Okay. But you, yeah, you were saying about um, Greg Tanzi and and the 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 muscle that I'd never heard of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, is it a case though now of? I mean, obviously science does progress and. The players definitely, I think we'll all agree, are, are more athletic than they were back then, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Is it a case of oh, yeah. use, applying that with the old... The old methods still are relevant, but taking some of the best best bits of the science as well? Yeah, I think you've got to have a mixture, to be fair. I think you have, yeah. And I'm, I'm only taking the, the science out, but... Uh, the, uh, sort of highlighting the science side of it because I think the nutrition and hydration is fantastic um, and players are taking it more serious these days well to a degree whereas lads years ago used to just go out and drink beer for hydration <laughs> after matches <laughs> I mean <laughs> gallon, gallons of beer I can, I can remember one lad when I was at, at Sunderland a lad called Clive Walker I remember Clive Walker I've... played for Chelsea. Yeah, yeah. I remember Hello. the name, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, Clive and I signed for Sunderland and uh, we were Cl we were thrown in the same digs together. And he was a great lad, Clive. And he used to say to me, <laughs> I was I was never a drinker, by the way, purely because that one, I, well, didn't particularly like drinking, but uh, I could never drink much anyway, not like the other lads. And, and actually feel good the next day so anyway we're, we're in these we're in these uh digs and um clive said to me he said i can't play on saturday you know until i've had a gallon on a thursday and i said well clive we're not out, allowed out after wednesday he said i don't know but i can't play on a saturday unless i've had on a thursday i'm thinking right i didn't necessarily think i could believe this so it came thursday he goes right come on roger we're off i said we're not allowed out. He said, come on, we're off. So we jumped in the car. We trolled all around the pubs in, uh, in and around Sunderland. Clive would not go home. I was driving. I'd be drinking fruit juice and stuff. He would not go back home until he'd had a gallon of beer. 
and it was just amazing because I could not have played on a Saturday if I'd had a gallon of beer, but he couldn't play on a Saturday unless he'd had a gallon of beer on a Thursday. And he, and he was a great player. He played at, you know, played at a great level. And this was the Premier League, by the way, what is now the Premier League. So, yeah, I don't think he'd do that these days. Is he gone again? No, no, we're still here. You could hear, we could hear you. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. we still hear you. Right. Yeah. Right. No, I don't so, think they could. You, met, you, you mentioned about the sports science side of thing. people coming in straight from university and the only... <laughs> They're only familiar yeah. with the the technical side of things, the theoretical side. Yeah, the theory. But that's not yeah, just the, the applied. Yeah, but that's that's just not not just limited to your line of work either. It also happens with people that run football clubs. So I'm going to say two words to you, Ryan McKnight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you look at football managers, how many football managers have never been players? Hardly mm -hmm. any. Yeah, not many. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yet everybody, everybody in their staff, apart from coaches, everybody on the sports science side and the physio side, most of them have never played before, so they don't understand the mentality of footballers. Um, at the moment, I'm mentoring. I've, these last two years, I've been brought out of retirement to to mentor young lads, young physios, and it's been great. You know, passing passing things on that they would never have learned in a university or in a textbook, you know? Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting, that, that side of it, that the coaches have always played football and managers, but not the other members of staff. Yeah. yeah. But is, is, is there enough to go around, though? I mean, I know, obviously, Sean Connolly's a physio, isn't he, for the Welsh FA? But when you yeah. look when you look at how many players actually become professionals, because it's difficult in it. I mean, if, obviously we would all be professionals if we could be. Uh, but is there is there enough professional players to go around to fill all those spots of managers, coaches, physios, player support? Oh, yeah. you know, all the all the yeah, yeah. Of course, there are. I mean, there are. Well, how many players? How many players are there that, that are in the football league? And each year they drop out, and, the, and other players take the place. The thing is, it's hard work. It's mm. it's really hard work to get you know to be qualified as a physio. Uh, you've got to really work at it. It's not something that um, that gets thrown at you. Um, I, I know one one uh, manager that's that's you know managed at well, I think at the highest level is championship. He went to do his his um, his uh, coaching badges, found them really difficult, and walked out. And but still ended up getting his badges anyway <laughs> through by hook or by crook. Yeah, <laughs> I do know who it is. I do know who it is. Oh, I'm not going to mention it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, um, so uh, Phil, some some of the questions that are coming through then, Phil Panton. Let's let's go with this one. Apart from match days at Hillsborough, you're still involved in the game. I don't know if you know something we don't. Yeah. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, I uh, when I left Chess, I left Stockport. So I was working, actually working with for Chesterfield and working at Stockport at the same time because we got non league. We got we dropped down into the leagues and the club went part time. And uh, Chesterfield Paul Cook asked me to go there. So I was working round about almost two years for both clubs, part time for Stockport and full time at Chesterfield. Um, and we got promoted to the to League One and almost into the Championship in the first two years. Um, but then it became too much, so I, I, I had to sort of knock Stockport on the head, really, because, you know, things weren't going really well there. The club, you know, the club were really struggling. So um, I, I got this, this job that I really had to focus on at Chesterfield, so I did leave in the end. Um, but, yeah, I, I was there four years and then I went to Doncaster for two years working with the under 18s and then Peterborough United Baron Ferguson asked me to go there and work there last season and I was assisting a young physio there and he left me midway through the season and I, I, I was so I was hey, this is a championship it's a really bad line now I don't know about, I don't know about Sorry, Roger. It's a, you, so we, we're breaking up really badly. Still doing it. 
don't Hello. know if you can. It... Can you hear us? Hello. I can Hello? hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me? We can, but it sounds like you're. A, you, sound, you sound very Dalek-y. You sound like you're a Dalek. <laughs> Any good? Yeah. Sounds sounds a bit better. Go on, carry on. You you got to the Doncaster, where you were oh. at Doncaster. Oh, that's a shame. I think we're going to lose Roger. Um, I think he lives. It sounds like he lives in the sticks. I think I'm not sure. Um, but this very poor connection. God, I'd love to live in the sticks. Would you? Yeah, be great that. Let's see if it's less clothes on. <laughs> let's, let's get him back in. You there, Roger? Don't think it's working. I don't think it's working. Yeah, Alex Skinner says get him in the county arms. Yeah, well, that would that would answer all the questions, but unfortunately, that means traveling over from um, Sheffield away. I think. The sticks, yeah, the sticks, wherever, wherever Roger is. Can you, uh, can you hear us, Roger? We can't hear any sound coming from you. That's a real shame. Okay, what should we do? Should we? Should we... Shall we? I tell you what. Let's just put see if Roger can sort that out. And if Roger, if you, I know Roger can hear us, uh, if you get it back working, can you give us a thumbs up from backstage? And we'll carry on for now. Um, because it's a really bad line from his end. Um, I feel like we're we're doing the um like Eurovision, and there's a bad connection, and we're trying to we're trying to fill fill the time with how, how many with, points is it? <laughs> yeah, your office is coming soon. Need to ask uh, Das Sampson actually if he if he got the gig with uh, with Romania. No, Belarus won it. No, I'm sure it was Romania. No, his, his girlfriend was Belarusian. But... That'll be it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... If not, I'd imagine the BBC will be having him on. I'd imagine he'll be one of the panelists. Uh, you reckon? Don't know. <laughs> I would. I definitely um, would. It's post watershed, isn't it? So yeah, true. It's not true. until like half ten at night, and everyone watching it's pissed anyway. So it's fine. <laughs> um, while I while I was talking to Roger to get him to come on the show, did you share? Did you, did you do the like and share video? The new one. No, I told them to like and share, but I forgot that it, I was all of a dither. Russell. Right. I know. Well, you did very well. I saw did you. Did that not was... come across with my panicky <laughs> face over here? No, you, you looked. You looked. You looked brilliant. So I'll play this. Someone video. in the comments said, "Oh, it's, it's good. Pra it's good practice for your radio show." I was like, "I've not done that for oh. like six months. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody listens to me." <laughs> um, so just play a short video. If you're watching us on YouTube, please like, share, and subscribe. And for the audio podcast, please rate, review, and recommend us on whatever podcast player you are listening to us on. Cheers, thank you. There we go. Uh, Roger's back. Let's try and get him back in, see if it's corrected itself. Hello, Roger. I don't think we're going to have any luck with this. Um, should we brief while Roger tries to do that? If he, if he if he suddenly starts speaking, we'll and we're hearing, we can we can join him in. Uh, Rochdale last night, just briefly talk about that did you go nick no i watched i watched on the stream from 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 edgerly oh, i watched the stream i did no no checking to botswana for this one oh. hello can you hear me now oh we can hear you roger yes hey. yes we can now brilliant there yeah. we go yeah we can hear you now so you you um th yeah thanks for persevering um <laughs> Yeah, you got up to the I've had to re-enter the studio. Go, I've had to go outside and re-enter the studio. What, physically? Did you walk outside yeah. and come back in as well? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did, um, so you, you got you got up to Doncaster. So you were, yeah, you, you moved to Doncaster. Yeah. What, uh, I, got yeah asked, so I asked to go there, got asked to cover for two weeks for, 
a physio to, who was doing the under 18s. And I said, yeah, I'll come down um, two weeks. I was there two years. Um, <laughs> and then I'd worked with Darren Ferguson and Grant McCann during those two years. And Darren asked me to go to Peterborough last year, last season, beginning of last season, which I did. And um, that was a good, just to mentor a young lad. And uh, this season, I was asked to go to Scunthorpe to mentor another young lad. And it's been great. It's been absolutely fantastic. I really enjoyed it. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm not working full time, just sort of four days a week. Um, and I've got a few other things that I do. But, yeah, I'm still involved in the game and it, it's brilliant. I mean, it's a fabulous career, you know. It's, it's a great, a great industry to work in football. It's just... I, I always equate it to, you know, when you're at school and you used to get your timetable and you always used to look for PE, didn't you? Um, and you got like PE on a Tuesday afternoon and Thursday morning and, and you always look forward to the PE lessons. Well, when I left school and uh, signed for Sheffield Wednesday, it was like getting your timetable and it was like Monday morning PE, Monday <laughs> afternoon PE. Tuesday morning, <laughs> Tuesday afternoon off, Wednesday off, Thursday morning PE, Friday morning PE, play a game of football on Saturday and get Sunday <laughs> off and get, paid, and get paid for it. It was fantastic. Um, that, that's the sort of life it's like. It's like been at school, really. Um, and, and football is a great, you know, there's, they're all good lads. It's very rare you come across them cross one that's not to be honest and the, and the same with managers they're, they're they're you know they're all good apart from the odd one so talking about managers then because we spoke earlier didn't we when we were planning this um you were yeah. talking to some friends you want to take us through that little story that you told me about oh how yeah many yeah well yeah we meet up there's a few of us in sheffield meet up um you know, maybe a Friday night, we'll go out for a drink just, just to meet up and a couple of hours, that's all. And we were talking, I was out with Chris Turner and Terry Curran and a couple of other lads on for last Friday, Paul Bradshaw, who played for Sheffield Wednesday as well. And um, one, of, one of the questions was uh, from Nick Johnson. I don't know if you've ever come across Nick Johnson. He's a journalist um, at Chesterfield. And he said, how many managers have I worked with? So we started counting them. You know, and, and we keep digressing onto different stories because one manager might might evoke a story from somebody else. And I got to 20 football for 19 years as a pro and then been in football ever since. So I've seen a lot of managers. Uh, and so we got to 20 and, and Carlton Palmer was the, the 20. Um, so yeah, you do come across a lot of a lot of managers and uh, and players as well. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Right. Hello? I, I'm scared that I'm scared that the line's going to go. Oh, we so we'll, we'll we'll cover. No, no, we we can hear you. We can hear you. Can you hear us? Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, so what we'll do is we'll we'll get through some of these questions uh, in case the in case the. Uh, the line goes again. So uh, we've got a couple about um, about are players ever too strong and fast for their physicality? Have you ever come across that? Going back to the sports science element again, the, the Greg Tanzi story. Um, yeah, uh, that's, I mean, it's a it's a difficult question, really. It's a good question, but a difficult question. Um, a lot of players do, I, I've watched them, these the sports scientists and, and fitness coaches, and they do, they do do a lot of strength work now. And I found at Peterborough last year that the fitness coaches, uh, everything was based around strength. And we, we had a lot of hamstring injuries there. Bear in mind, I wasn't a head physio there. I was just assistant. We had a lot of hamstring, hamstring injuries and reoccurrences. Now, as a physio, you pride yourself on not getting re you know, uh, recurrent injuries. Uh, you pride yourself on getting a player back and he stays back 
until he gets another injury or a disc sore, not to break down with the same injury. Now, they were getting lots of um, lots of injuries last season, hamstring injuries, one player in particular. And um, I was looking at it, we had a discussion, and I, I'd noticed that everything was, well, I can't, they couldn't understand why he got an injury, because hamstring injury, because it was strong, there was strength there. It's not all about strength. It's all about functional endurance, you know, as well. And, and a lot of their their their, ex, their their rehab programs were just about strength, with no no functional activities incorporated into that. So you've not got the endurance that you needed. Um, so uh, yeah, you could. In, in answer to the question, yes, if you do lots of strength work, you can be too strong. I think we just caught the tail end of that and then the line went again. So apologies. <laughs> so we we can't hear you again. I think what we'll do is we'll we'll go with a, two more questions if we can get you back and then we'll um we'll we'll probably just wrap it up there. Um if you can try and get back to us, Roger. Um Interesting though, and I did say to Roger before when when I was talking to him on a line that actually we were just a phone line. And we, I said to him we could probably do about three shows with Roger. Yeah, you know the because the, the amount that we you know the the amount of time that he's spent as a player, amount of time that he spent at County, and all the memories that he's got. And we did what we did what I delve. It's, it's a pity about the line because we did what I delve into some of this stuff. Um, so it's a real shame that the line's not great. Um, so we'll try and let Roger go to a part of his house. That he's getting signal in, because <laughs> um, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure he's got a one. Or, I'm sure he's got a Danny story he can tell us before we, before we go. Um, but yeah, we'll have to make do. So Rochdale last night, while Roger tries that. Um, yeah, I, you didn't go. I went. I I didn't. You watched it from Tanzania or something, did you? Oh no, you said Edge. No, no, I yeah, I went to, yeah, because it's uh, not not that I'd ever ever advocate help, like using an illegal. I, no, I no, no. never, I'd never advocate like using a VPN and paying for a stream because that'd just be an awful thing to do. But yeah, yeah so watched watched it on a completely kosher stream. Yeah, again, we had this discussion last week about with the crawler game how we weren't at our best. Uh, Dave Shallon, I noticed, didn't really mention that in his interview. He was. But it's just when you when you come up against teams that are fighting for their lives, it, it's 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 not going to be as easy as you think. No. Looking at the table, that's why I'm so bad at football gambling. I think. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's why I'm bad at it as well. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, Roger's back. He's back in the studio. I think he's gone out and come back in again. So let's try that again when I can see movement backstage. Um, yeah, it was. It, it, I thought. Um, I thought we played all right. Should we try him again? Let's see if that works. This has been the. Hello. Hey, Roger. Hello. You are back? Hmm. Hello. Can you hear me? We can hear. Yes. Can you hear us? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. I, I could hear you all the time. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you now. You just went, you went a bit Dalek-y before, but you, you seem to be okay now. So I think we haven't got much time before it probably goes again. Um, yeah, what, finally, what, what I'm going to suggest is I'm, I, am, I am quite happy to come over to Stockport. Yeah, and you can come into yeah. my bar and we'll, we can do it live or pre-recorded in the bar. Okay, where, where is it? Where is it? Uh, Breadbury in Stockport. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know Breadbury, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah we could do that then. If we could arrange that, that would be better, really. Yeah, well, let's let's get that arranged. Um, before you go, okay. though, um, tell us tell us one Danny Bagara story, your favourite. <laughs> oh, there's a couple. There's a couple. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> brilliant. Absolutely, I love Danny, but you had to you had to know how to handle him. Oh my God! Right. So I used to drive over a lot with Danny from Sheffield to Stockport because. Danny, I think everybody knew, no secret, Danny loved a drink. So it meant that if I drove over with him, he could get, have a few drinks after training and I would drive him back home. <laughs> so we're right. In fact, there, are, there are loads of stories about Danny. Um, so we'd signed a player called uh, Murray. 
not Glenn Murray. Somebody Sorry. Murray, an American. Yeah. yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I can't remember his first name, but I think it was Murray from America. So he goes, he goes to me one day, Roger, I'm so, we're signing this striker. He's an American international. And I said, oh, wow. Is he good? He says, he's American international. And I said, <laughs> who's he play for? He said, he plays for America. I said, yeah, but who's he play for? He says, are you not listening to me? He plays for America. I said, yeah, Gary Lineker plays for England, but he also plays for Tottenham. Who does he play for? He says, are you not listening to me? He plays for America. <laughs> and I was like, oh, right. Okay. All oh, right. Got you, Danny. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. And, you know, I just I just couldn't get it, that one, at all. Apparently, he was one of the worst <laughs> strikers we'd had. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and another one, story, that was. Another yeah. one. Terrible. So, there, there was another one we were driving over one day, and there was something on about spacemen on the news. And I said, oh, yeah. He said, I said, uh, you know how they train for uh, weightlessness before they go into space? I said, they go in an aeroplane, and it, it's called, what do they call it now? I can't, I, can't, I, I can't remember the name of it offhand. But they go in an aeroplane, I said, and they go to about 40,000 feet. Then they cut the engine. I said, and the plane stalls for about a, a minute. And then during that, that fall from that, that height, everybody in the plane is weightless. He goes, don't be stupid. They have a tank and they switch off the gravity so they all float around. <laughs> I, said, I said, what? <laughs> so he thought they had a... <laughs> Oh, we've Roger, you've gone again. You've gone again. We'll oh, have to. What a time, bro. I know. Oh, what a yeah. Great story to end on. Um, oh, he's gone again. So, right. So, I think what we'll do is we'll arrange for Roger to come over to Stockport. Um, do either in show. the do a live show, either in the bar, or we'll we'll get him down for a bit of a Q and A, maybe somewhere, and we'll arrange. We'll get that arranged. Um, and pe patron members can get priority to that. Um. Yeah, sorry, Roger, if you can hear us, you, you've gone again. Um, so um, I think what we'll do is we'll call it a day there uh, and I'll speak to you separately, Roger, to try and arrange something uh, for a show in um, in in Stockport. He's ringing me now. So do you want to <laughs> just fill I'll it? Close the show, close the show. I'll, close three, the show. I'll, yeah. I'll three wheel it again. Oh, absolutely excellent. Oh, this is... This, yeah, oh. Genuinely, I think I think we could honestly, I, even if we'd had Roger on for the full hour tonight, that would have been nowhere near enough. So we will, but yeah, we, we're going we're going to push that towards being a live show. Um, and if you're subscribed to the bit, as good a reason as any to subscribe to our Patreon because you'll get priority on the tickets for that. We've we've got we've got venue lined up for live shows and stuff, so it'll be good. So sign up to Patreon, give us. Just sign up for three pounds a month, which we, we think is very. It's the smallest amount we could possibly make it on there because we know times are shit and everything. But hopefully, times will be a bit, little bit less shit when we've got Roger Wild on the go. Right, that just about wraps it up for this evening. Don't forget, if you've been watching live on YouTube, please click the thumbs up button because there's more people watching than have given the, the thumbs up. Uh, on to Barrow away Saturday and hopefully we'll be back, or we will be back next week, but hopefully we'll be discussing a sixth win in a row. For what it's worth, I think we will. I won't be, I certainly won't be pitching 5 nil for the score for Barrow on Saturday though after last night hello mate you alright hello yes yeah, so I've just spoke to Roger he is definitely up for doing a live show which we'll arrange and he's happy to do a QA and a with a live audience there we go so we'll arrange that there you go happy good days stuff. yeah we'll arrange that good stuff hey, don't, don't be, don't, that's mine that's me good stuff what are you saying before <laughs> alright the main so he just it get your own out. bloody, get your own bloody catchphrase. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so thanks so much to Roger for that for, for coming. I know it's a bit of a yeah. nightmare with the technology, but yeah, we I think we got the gist of that, and definitely the Danny story at the end was an absolute belter. So yeah. um it's getting clipped up. Yeah, really good, really, really good. Um 
Final thing then, should we just really cap off with the Rochdale match? I think you were talking about that just now. I, I wasn't actually. I was so, I was pushing the Patreon again because I'm a oh. corporate whore. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, the Rochdale match then very quickly from last night. Um. I yeah, a few people have commented, thought it was that that was that and Crawley was harder than the Stevenage match, and last night, um, proved to be. Uh, th- thought Danny Lloyd had a good game for them. But yes, probably... that, was gonna, that was gonna be my that was my big takeaway from their performance. I think I said, considering they they hit the woodwork, it's a bit unfair to say they didn't threaten. But I don't think I don't think they did really. At, at, at half time, I wasn't thinking we were going to lose. I was I was thinking you know maybe we might not find a breakthrough. But we, we did we did very quickly. Yeah, as it transpired in the second half. Yeah, and I'd just finished celebrating the first one, and bang, there goes another one. Yeah. I think it, I just felt it was a matter of just a matter of time before we got mm. the breakthrough. They we had a couple of I think Crowsdale had one blocked pretty much on the line, and we hit the post through camps. Um, so I think it just felt like it was a matter of time mm. before we were going to get the breakthrough. Um, so yeah, good result in the end. They got one back. Put a bit, a bit disappointed with the defending, but five wins on, on the goal. spin. On, on goal, was it? wasn't it? That's. Yeah, there's, a, there's a, a fan cam from the Rochdale end. It's a Will Collar own goal. So another hat trick for Will Collar. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it sort of came off his off his body. Was, the way he was turned and it sort of came off his body as opposed to it being their, their player's goal. Yeah, so we're just banging him in at both ends. That, that's how good he is. You know, you know what, Blackburn? He's, he's scoring on goals. You, you don't want to be... You don't want to be signing a player who's scoring on goals, do you, Blackburn? No, no. He's rubbish. He's rubbish anyway. He's not even been not even been good. I did. I, you know he, what? So, so, as soon as he started playing for us, when as soon as he signed and he did his first touch, I, I said, I said on this show, he's rubbish. Yeah. Dinner. Yeah. Dinner. You know what? <laughs> I, I, I've I've seen nothing but that on Facebook and Twitter for the last two weeks. Like, oh, we'll call him rubbish. <laughs> and I, I was thinking, I'm getting sick of this joke now. But it's. I love the fact we've, we've pretty much finished the show. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's. It's the it's the Stuart Lee school of of comedy, isn't it? If you say it two, three, four times, it's not funny. But by the eighth and ninth time, it's funny again. Yeah. Well, we we never got to that with the Ryan Rydell joke. We never. No. We never, no. The copyright. Yeah, it had legs that did, and it was ju- it was just about getting up on its knees and starting to crawl, and we didn't even it didn't even get chance to run. Such a shame. Unlike Ryan himself. Yes. A very good runner. Yeah. Thoughts on Jack Stretton's cameo as well. He boiled some piss, didn't he? Yeah, quite right as well. Yeah, yeah, good, a good old good. Yeah, a bit of, Jim Jim Bentley just was, and I mean Jim Bentley sounds like the most non-league name for a manager ever. So it's a good job that that's where that's where they're, they're off to, isn't it? Um, yeah, he just would not let that go at full time. It was, I mean, it was Danny Lloyd that he was having the bit of a the bit of a tussle with, and Danny Lloyd didn't seem bothered. No, because it's just part it of the is. it's just part, part of the yeah. game, isn't it? Part and parcel of the game. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Callum Davenport, nice little cameo. Looked very composed at a point where Rochdale were, were trying to push forward and got himself out a couple of tight spaces. He was always looking for the pass rather than just hoofing it upfield and waiting for him to come again. Yeah, but my saying waiting for him to come again seems like they were just laying siege and they, they weren't really. They were just lumping balls, trying to lump balls into the box, weren't they really? Yeah, um, yeah, they were. They were. They were. It's very one-dimensional, wasn't it? Um, I yeah. thought it was really good. I thought it was really good. Um, Jacob Davenport. Can't wait to see more of him. Uh, somebody did comment before. I saw it, but I didn't. I didn't uh, put it up because we we're on with Roger. Um, replacement for Ryan Crowsdale changed my mind. The uh, the listener, the watcher, put. What do you think about that? I think. I think com- competition for Crowsdale. That's. I don't know, but maybe eventually. I mean, once next season comes round again, we're going to be in that point of playing Saturday, Tuesday for a long time. So we need we need that rotation option for Crowsdale, which is something we've not really had this season. Obviously, Akil Wright came in as that, but he's, he's made right centre-back his own. You don't want to be moving him from there. But yeah, it's just nice to have... I, th- I think when the, when the window's shut, I think 
99 percent of us were happy with the business that was done in january yeah there was still still that niggling thing that oh maybe we could do with someone and then then with crowsdale picking up the yellow last week as well thinking well if he gets a red that's a game ban who's who's slotting in there but yeah yeah it's not nice to have that bit that bit of bit of course and very very well announced by the club social media as well Liam mm. done some good work there do you reckon they had that photo of davenport station ready or if, if, if they had to send like the work, work experience kid down to take a picture <laughs> I reckon. I reckon they'd Google it. To be fair, yeah. Imagine they've gone to Woodsmore instead. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's come out. I've got the photo for you. It's like no. He's called Davenport. It's not taken of Woodsmore. <laughs> Reddish North. Why? Why have you gone to Reddish North? <laughs> yeah, why? Yeah. Why would you even That's do that? Manchester. <laughs> but he looked tidy, didn't he? And uh, a left footer. I know you. I know you like a left footer. Um, yeah. I mean, which is weird because I'm I'm not. I mean, I'm barely a right footer. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's nice to yeah that that extra extra bit of balance. Yeah, and uh, Grace Grayson as well is a left footer, I believe. Although we've not we've not seen him yet. No, we haven't, and we haven't seen Aaron Rowe either, have we? Um, no, he's injured at the moment, isn't he? he yeah. On the bench. Yeah. So he was in the courtyard pre-match Stevenage, and he did say he's 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 days away from from being sort of ready to go really um so yeah, another, another so... option you imagine rotation option for noel or substitute option for now because noel is looking fantastic looking certainly an upgrade on southern males i think as well i know and it's it's i i i love south males me uh, yeah. but he is he's an upgrade and i think south males might struggle to get back in if i i know aaron rose alone alone he isn't he um we're not going to be seeing Salvin Hales till next season anyway. No, and, now, and there's so, time so for that. At least we're covered yeah. there till the end of the season now. Yeah, yeah, and that's it. Noyle, for me, has just been absolutely fantastic. Love yeah. it. Strong. Yeah. He's crossing. His crossing's brilliant. So I'm surprised. It just surprises me why he's not League One. We know the way. Oh, the way the, the it way will, it will be from August. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. On on that, do, do we think second is out of reach? I I personally don't. I I I, I think second is well up for grabs. I know Stephen has got a couple of games in hand, but in the the form they're in at the moment, yeah, I don't think it's out of reach at all. I think that they, I think they've got a they've got a uh, a stumble in them. I think we would play Carlisle uh, at Edgeley Park early in the season. They looked average. Mm. I mean, that's the, you know we'll probably go to Carlisle and the Spankers, you know, and the, the, that'll come back to haunt me. But over the season, I think they looked, they didn't look anything that I, you know, I didn't, I didn't watch them and go, wow, they're pretty good, like I did with Swindon and, and Leighton Orient. And yeah, that's it. Where you think that they were cut above everyone else? But yeah. with um, Carlisle, they on sat- Saturday are away at Crawley, which I think is a real potential banana skin. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, because they've got a, they 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 looked all right. They've got the old Swindon manager that had them playing pretty well. So yeah, yeah, I thought, I thought Crawley were all right against us last Tuesday as well. You know, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I think if they carry on that level of performance, they'll be. I mean, I I I think Crawley will be will be all right myself. I think Rochdale Rochdale are done for, and their fans seem to think the same as well. But Crawley have yeah. got four games in hand on Hartlepool directly above them. There's a bit of unrest at Hartlepool. Jeff Stelling. The uh, tastemaker himself has come out very cryptically wanting Curl to be sacked. Wow! Did, did, you, did you see his tweet? No, no. It was a it was a very strange way of. of I mean, I, I like Jeff Stelling to be honest. Um, so he, he tweeted last night: "Feel bad, but Everton, Leeds, Southampton, and QPR just changed." Because because their their clubs the same size as Hartlepool. It's definitely yeah, a yeah. horrible situation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. But but yeah, is it is it too? I suppose it's not too late to change. But as long as a new manager is going to get the best out of what they've already got, because they can't go bringing in. And I think for, for the most part, the players available on free transfers that have been available when the window shut, because that's that's all you can sign. They've got to be on a free transfer when the window closed to be able to sign on a free now. Yeah, because Davenport's been training with us since then, anyway. So I suppose that's that's why he could, could come straight into the squad last night rather than having to wait, and we brought him on. Yeah, but yeah, with yeah, Hartlepool, yeah. I've, I've, I think I think it'll be Hartlepool and Rochdale myself on on coming form. I think I think Crawley have got enough about them now to. 
Yeah. Despite despite just letting their owners play football manager for the first six months of the season, I think I think they'll be fine. Yeah, it is looking like Crawley and, and Rochdale, isn't it? But you, uh, sorry, um, Hartlepool and Rochdale. But you never know, do you? You never know. Let's not concern ourselves with the bottom. <laughs> not our problem. Not our, not our problem. <laughs> not our no. problem. And do you think we'll be having a party in Castle Street on the May, May Bank holiday then? Well, um, I, I wasn't uh, last time. I was for weeks before. I, I was told, oh yeah, get down to Notion. Notion's going to be the party place after after we win the league and all that. And then I was in Notion for about half five. Just completely oblivious that there was a big party going on the Castle Street. <laughs> so I don't know where I'm going to be this time. Then it'll be Notion after. <laughs> yeah. And then all, no. all the people who talk to go to Notion were just arriving at Notion as I was falling out of the door. I see. What will happen is everyone will tell you it's at Notion. Uh, sorry, it's at. It'd just be the other way around. Just so you got. I'm to starting go. to think it's a me problem. <laughs> 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 um. <laughs> Okay, uh, I just wanted to finish on something in particular. I wanted to show this to Roger Wilde, actually. Does, uh, this is just, just for the people who are watching the, the YouTube, because the people who are listening to the audio won't get this. But I just wanted to show you this picture of Roger Wilde from when he played for Sunderland. And I want, I want, I want people to tell me, does it look like... Because um, I thought when I looked at it, I thought, wow, does it look like Chris Sutton? Hi. It does. Less, <laughs> less annoying than Chris Sutton. Yeah, yeah. Roger's such a Roger's a much better person and pundit and things than Chris Sutton. But yeah, doesn't he look like Chris Sutton? Weird. Anyway, I thought I'd share that. I, l- I learned more from Roger, despite the like, internet issues included, than I've ever learned from Chris Sutton without any <laughs> Yeah. It's <laughs> a lot more sense. He does. And, and okay. he's probably a better, better, better guitarist as well. I would say so. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And we didn't even talk about Fracture and Tom Bennett or anything like that, did we? Just, just before the end, I noticed he had his guitar in the background. He did. I well, like, I, sp- I, sp- song. I spoke to him. We spoke about the guitar. And he said, he, "If you know, if if, he, if it was right, he'd do something for us." But oh. we will bring. He'll, uh, let's see if he'll bring it to the live gig that we're going to plan, and we're definitely going to plan that. Definitely going to yeah. plan that. Yeah, I'm, I'll I'll get my singing, vo- my vocal warm up. So. <laughs> Let's get Gary Stockford down again. <laughs> yeah, shout out bloody hell. Oh, here we go. Yeah. To be fair, he's probably, he's probably still in the pubs of Stockport from last time somewhere. Probably. probably. <laughs> so just drag him out of whichever hole he's in. They won't know each other, will they? There was no overlap with them two, was there? I don't think. I don't think so, no. I, th- I think yeah. Roger left just before. Yeah. Gary Stockford, yeah. Okay, should we think about wrapping it up? There's one bit of admin that I wanted to do. Um, there is a charity bike ride. I know that Andy Birchenough, Damon Carroll and Simon Dawson are definitely doing it. There may be more than that. They're doing it from Hartlepool to Stockport County when we play our last game of the season. I think they're doing that's the day. I hope they know it's a 12.30 kickoff. Are yeah. they going to be there? Uh, no, that's, that's a, a big ride. There. It's a big ride. Um, so, yeah. That I'm sure you'll see the the details of that come out. We said we'd uh, we'd announce it, and we have done. Um, and yeah, and you know, I'm doing a big ride this see this this year as well in August. I saw yes. that on Facebook. Yeah, yes, I am. I've got it's all planned. All the hotels. We're we still booked. calling it a big ride because I'm not nearly mature enough to, <laughs> to handle that. <laughs> Let's call it Lands End to John O'Groats. Then we'll give it its proper name. Slightly better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but, but that's all I'll mention of that because it's not for charity or anything. It's just a bucket list thing. Um, you might you might miss uh, Portsmouth away it's in August. You see, well, I've I've already committed to, to to the first two weeks of August and missing those games, whatever they may be in whatever division they may be. So, um, well, let's, let's hope it's just something shit like Fleetwood or something. Yeah, that's Fleet- you've already seen us play. <laughs> yeah, Fleetwood, Morecambe. Yeah, um, Accrington. Great Cambridge, I don't know. Um, yeah, so that's happening. So, yeah, um, thanks to everybody for listening. Sorry about the technical difficulties. Obviously, it's out of our control, but I think we did quite well. And Nick, you were superb in with the film. Thanks, mate. I needed that boost. Yeah, if only I'd had that, that sort of encouragement from Mrs. Capener in year seven music. 
<laughs> Not a bit about that. I, I heard you say that in the filler, and you said it at the start. So is that th is that three jokes in one? Th the same three jokes in no, one? No, no. I, I, I mentioned it in I mentioned it in the intro as like a throwaway gag, but then I was really stalling for time. I was really stalling for something to talk about. <laughs> but this is how I told the full story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a good one. Right. Should we wrap? Should we wrap it up? It's getting late. People have We're using a new outro, can't we? It's we can use a new outro. Thank you to everybody for listening and watching, and please do rate and review us, and like and subscribe and share, and all those things that the video that I that I created should tell you. I should, I should probably <laughs> do that a bit more. Um, and we will. It turns out I did play that as well. I, apparently, apparently, I did play that. Oh, did you? Was... <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, yeah. it, it was all just a. I just went into like a trance-like state. I think. <laughs> <laughs> just hit all the buttons a big blur right we will be back next week uh yeah enjoy barrow away those that are going and speak to you soon cheers thank you bye this episode of the scarf begawa war was written recorded and produced by russ johnson and nick lee the music on the opening titles was produced by dan johnson Subscribe wherever you get your content, as well as finding out how to join the TSBW fan club. Check out the links in the description or go to all the W's, scarfbegalawar.co.uk.